Mm. Alright guys, it is another gray, gloomy, rainy, depressing day here in the end times and what's left of the paradise of <coughs> Garfield, Texas here on this gloomy Wednesday, September 26, 2018. So, uh, good Lord guys, got a lot going on here today. So I'm going to make today's climate change meltdown roundup rant a fairly quick one here on the mainstream and not so mainstream media. Uh, I guess these are mainstream medias and I think I just have four stories I want to want to touch on today but they're they're all pretty good ones. Okay so we're gonna start out right here on good old Bloomberg Business Week. There you go. For one of the most intelligent stories I have read about uh, climate change in a long time. Take it away, Bloomberg. <clears throat> New climate debate. How to adapt to the end of the world. Researchers are thinking about social collapse and how to prepare for it. So anyway, guys, I say this is an excellent article, and it's so good. In fact, what I did is I passed this article off to my little milk toast twin over there on Collapse Chronicles, uh, since it's talking about climate change and the upcoming collapse of society. So you can go over there to Collapse Chronicles and listen to the rest of the story. I'm just going to read just the first few paragraphs to get your appetite whetted, and then you can go over there. <clears throat> Before Puerto Rico's power grid collapsed, wildfires reached the Arctic, and a large swath of North Carolina was submerged under floodwaters. Jonathan Gosling published an academic paper asking what might have seemed like a shrill question. How should we prepare for the consequences of planetary climate catastrophe? Quote, if some of the more extreme scenarios of eco-crisis turn out to be accurate, we in the West will be forced to confront such transformations. No shit, Sherlock wrote Gosling, who is an anthropologist just retiring from the University of Exeter in England. And almost two years later since he wrote that, as the U.S. stumbles through a con second consecutive season of record hurricanes and fires, more academics are approaching questions once reserved for doomsday cults. Hmm. Can modern society prepare for a world in which global warming threatens large-scale social, economic, and political upheaval? The answer is no, they can't. What are the policy and social implications of rapid and mostly unpleasant climate disruption? the answer of the policy and social applications of rapid climate disruption would be... Okay, but again, if you want to listen to the rest of this article, you can go over there to Collapse Chronicles and listen to that old depressed Collapsitary and read it for you. Okay, let's go over here. Uh, where is this from? Maybe Mashable. Uh, finally, the, 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 it is official. Arctic ice hits one of its lowest points on record. But there is another grim statistic, you know, above and beyond the uh, statistic that... Uh, that 2018 is the sixth lowest. The sixth lowest for all of you. Dude! 
uh, followers, once again, predictions of doom. Absol well, not absolute horseshit, but horseshit for another year. But anyway, uh, what is going on here in 2018? Sea ice in the Arctic has just about melted to its lowest point of 2018, and this reinforces a trend of dwindling ice atop the globe where the climate is warming two or three times faster than the rest of the planet. As of last week, this year is the sixth lowest <clears throat> ice extent known as the sea ice minimum in nearly 40 years of satellite records. Uh, this, this statistic alone might not carry the bite of 2012's extreme Arctic melt in which the ice thawed to its lowest point ever recorded, yet a closer examination of what has transpired in the Great North this year reveals the Arctic's ever-accelerating disappearance. Uh, this is NOAA climatologist Jerry Mathis, quote, I don't want the story to be this was a ho-hum ho year. Even though the ice did not break an all-time record, it was still well below the historical average. And then, so this is a long involved article, which I'm just, I'm just pretty much going to summarize here. So what they talk about next here about this uh, sea ice extent is they uh, mentioned that the, the 12 lowest years of sea ice coverage on uh, the, in, in, in the history of record keeping have been the last 12 years. No shit, Sherlock. 12 for 12. I mean, the, 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 the deck of cards is a little bit shuffled, but it's pretty close to the same every year. So that's the first thing they want to talk about, that you understand 12 for 12. And then the, the bigger story, this other grim statistic that they're talking about here, I and plenty of other doomers, uh, Paul Beckwith among them, have, have uh, pointed out uh, in, in several rants already this summer that what you saw for the first time that you did see for the first time ever this summer was the, what they call that old thick ice. You, you know, the important stuff uh, was actually started breaking up, literally breaking up. The, what they had used to call the last ice. The last ice. Uh, is already showing uh, signs of crumbling and decaying as the, uh, it's the total uh, volume of ice, which is not just the coverage in, in square miles, but how thick the ice is. And, and the more important thing is that the ice is continuing to get thinner and thinner. And I don't know if they actually keep records but the implication is, is that 2018 had by far the, the, the lowest total ice volume in the Arctic and that the, these little minimal differences in the actual coverage of this one year thin ice uh, isn't really what the discussion's about, although of course uh, Ninety-nine percent of those clueless fucking moron climate uh, deniers will say, I'll, "I'll take this same story," and they'll say, "You know, these fucking alarmist. There is, uh, the, you know, this was the sixth uh, th th that things are actually getting better. They will actually, they will actually twist this to say that there is more ice in the Arctic uh, now than there was." six years ago. That was and some of them know goddamn well it's bullshit. 
which is disinformation, and most of them are just clueless fucking morons with the uh, discernment and uh, critical thinking capabilities of, uh, well, Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, and so then when, right next to that story, I saw this, uh, <clears throat> I saw this headline in The Guardian talking about new research shows the world's ice is doing something not seen before. And so I immediately jumped to the conclusion that this was a story about the breakup of the oldest ice, about the thick ice. And that's not what it's uh, talking about at all. What this story is talking about, what we're seeing more and more all over the globe, is, is what they're, they're, they're calling glacial surges, where these, these glaciers just suddenly make, like, make big, uh, you know, big advances, like overnight. It's called a glacial surge. And again, I'm just going to try to summarize this kind of complicated story in my, uh, in my limited fashion here. I am not Paul Beckwith. Paul Beckwith probably is explaining this somewhere. And what this is talking about is this newest research about how glaciers are, not, are, are no longer cemented to the bedrock below the glaciers as the as the ice on the very bottom of the glacier for a variety of reasons that uh, scientists are trying to figure out that the ice on the bottom of the glacier that holds these glaciers in place is starting to melt and anyone who has ever slipped on a wet uh, concrete floor knows exactly what the glaciers are doing. They're going whoop like this, and uh, more and more uh, of these uh, these glaciers are slipping and plunging ahead. And this obviously this process is going to ramp up uh, over the uh, damn bugs crawling me. Where is the insectopolis in my own damn bedroom? Jesus. Uh, just to read the first. Okay, first couple of paragraphs. In this warming world, some parts of the planet are warming much faster than others. The warming is causing large ice bodies to start to melt and move rapidly, in some cases sliding into the ocean. This movement is the topic of very new scientific research that was just published in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters. Um, the Arctic is warming much faster than other parts of the planet, and there is, and and the ice there is showing signs of rapid warming. This fact has serious consequences. First, melting ice can cause sea levels to rise and inundate coastal areas, and it also makes storms like hurricanes and typhoons more destructive. Melting ice also causes a feedback loop, which in turn causes more future warming and then more ice loss. No shit, Sherlock. And uh, then it breaks all this down. But, uh, and then of course they, they remind you of this article about at least, because this is happening in Antarctica too, so they're you know they're talking about building that underwater wall to keep the uh, this happening from the Antarctic ice sheets. Okay, a couple of alert tribes members, maybe over there from England, not sure, have sent me this story fresh from the BBC News. Uh, just came out. Uh, let's go over to the shithole country of China for this no shit Sherlock story. China coal power building boom sp sparks climate warming. Warning, warming and warning. Uh, anybody who thinks 
that China uh, is declaring any sort of war on pollution. Let the uh, BBC explain it to you. <clears throat> Building work has restarted at hundreds of Chinese coal-fired power stations according to a new analysis of satellite imagery. This, the research carried on by Green Campaigner's Coal Swarm suggests that 259 gigawatts of new capacity are under development in China. The authors say this is the same capacity to produce electricity as the entire U.S. coal fleet. Yep, and the study also says government attempts to cancel many plants have failed. Well, uh, if there were ever any attempts, they have failed, but as I've been saying along, uh, since day one, uh, this unadulterated horseshit, the Chinese government is the last people on the planet to declare war on, uh, on coal burning. Okay. <clears throat> According to the new study, there was a surge in new coal projects approved uh, in China between 24 and 2016, and <clears throat> I assume that they're saying this is, it is still going on and, and getting more. Uh, and the report says that at present, China has 993 gigawatts of coal power capacity but the approved new coal plants would increase that number by 25 percent. Uh, and then it, it, it talks about, again, if you believe for one minute that the Chinese government is cracking down on this, then it's pretty clear that it has failed. Uh, for instance, in September of last year, in September of 2017, China's National Energy Administration uh, ordered a group of plants to slow down uh, construction. However, satellite data suggests that half of this capacity appears not to have slowed down at all, quoting Ted Nace from Coal Swarm, quote, this new evidence that China's central government has not been able to stop the runaway coal-fired power plant building is alarming. The planet cannot tolerate another U.S.-sized block of coal plants to be built. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, but we're going to wrap up this short and sweet version of our climate change meltdown roundup rant. Uh, several versions of this story. This is live science. Planet Earth wobbles as it spins and now scientists know why. Take a wild guess, at least for one third of the reason the entire planet is wobbling on its axis as it's spinning around on its axis. What could be the great mystery? Well, at least one third of the answer here in the Anthropocene would be humans are responsible for some of the wobble in Earth's spin. No shit, Sherlock. Since 1899, the Earth's axis of spin has shifted about 34 feet. Now, research quantifies the reasons why and finds that a third 
is due to melting ice and rising sea levels, particularly in Greenland, placing the blame on the doorstep of anthropogenic climate change. No shit, Sherlock. So congratulations, humans. We are now making the planet wobble on its axis. Oh yeah, we're going to turn this freight train around, guys. We are now wobbling an entire planet. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up and come back with a few wobbly headlines telling about uh, a few reasons the, the planet is wobbling on its axis because of humans that don't have anything to do with climate change. Coming up in part two. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We all know why. Bye, guys.